Hey everyone, welcome to another video. Now, I've actually been really excited to do this one, guys, and today it's going to be on Echo Mid. Now, Echo is a champion that I recommend every single mid player should at least attempt to pick up for their champion pool, because I think he's just a great champion for so many reasons. He's got a simple kit, simple identity, he's really fun to play because he's very mobile, very burst-oriented, he's great for solo queue because even when he gets counterpicked, he can minimize any single matchup with the strategy that I'm going to go over within this video, and he's just an overall good champion to, for you to understand the assassin playstyle. So, diving straight in guys, we're going to start with the build. With the build, you want to be going Corrupting Pot, start into First Base, Dark Seal, and Dawn's Ring. And don't worry, I will cover why we build that every game within this video. Then you finish off your Proto Belt, into a Lich Bane, into a Zonyas, and then you can just round out the build with whatever you need. Maybe you need a Rabadons, a Void Staff, etc., or Morellos, etc. Um, with Summoner Spell Choice, always go Flash Ignite, and I'll talk about that within the video as well. And then a matchup tier list, guys. I'm just going to put it on the screen now. The top row are the matchups that are the easiest for Echo. The middle row is the ones that can go 50 50, very much dependent on the skill level you're in or the elo you're in, and also the jungle matchup. And the bottom row being like the most, the most hardest matchups for Echo. And for runes, guys, I opt into Electrocute, Sudden Impact, Eyeball Collection into Ravenous Hunter, Secondary Inspiration with Dematerializer and Time Warp Tonic. And again, this all ties into the specific Echo strategy that I'm going to go over within this video. So sit tight, guys. So diving straight into the first VOD here, guys. This one's going to be Echo versus Cassiopeia. Now, if we take a little look at the team composition that I'm versing, what do we actually see here? We see low range, low CC. Low range, low CC. Low range, low CC. Low CC. Nami has a bit of CC, but it's quite unreliable. And the only person that can really lock me down this game is this Cassiopeia. Now, I do this every single game when playing Echo because Echo is a champion that is very susceptible to lockdown. So when you see, chan or I guess, a composition that has a lack of CC and a lack of range and that can't really lock you down, you should be thinking to yourself, wow, I just hit the jackpot, right? So this, I'm very, very happy with this composition. And the reason this is a really crucial exercise to go over every single game is because if you are able to identify which champions and which abilities specifically that are going to be able to lock you down in place so you can't get your ultimate off, then you're going to be able to play around it a lot more effectively once you get into those you know, early to mid game, even late game skirmishes, okay? So it's a really good habit to get into. And in this game, for me, I need to be conscious of Cassio Miasma, her W, her ultimate, and potentially even just Nami Bubble, but again, it's not really that reliable. So it's a really good habit to get into, guys. So diving straight into this early laning phase, I quickly want to start by talking about the first mini game that you need to play or accomplish when playing Echo in any single matchup. Now, this and for those of you who haven't watched my videos before, the, the term minigame is something I, I use to kind of explain an objective with your early laning phase. So, think of it as like this. The, the minigame that we're going to play today with Echo is that you want to get to 750 gold, which is for a Dorans, a D-Ring, and a uh, Dark Seal. And the reason this is very important is because this is a very specific strategy with Echo. If you go this build path, you minimize in the early game, the first mini game you play is to get to 750 gold with getting as much CS and as much XP and getting as most efficient base as possible. If you can do that, you're going to be able to get to level 7 and then use all your dematerializers on the three casters. Your Q at level 7 will actually one hit the backline. It's very similar to the TF strategy, using all your dematerializers on the caster creeps. Now, by the time, and again, by this time, by the time you're level seven, you're gonna have your uh, revolver, just the revolver element of it, and then yeah, you're gonna be able to one shot the back creeps, and this is gonna help you push and move a lot more, get a lot more priority, have a lot more wave clear, and it feels really, really good for Echo. So this is why we opt in for dematerial. I opt in for dematerializer into the runes. Um, this is a really nice strategy for Echo. So this is the first mini game, guys. Get to 750 gold while maximizing the amount of um, gold you're going to get through CSing and minimizing deaths, blowing summoners, etc. So you may ask, guys, well, what do you do level one? Do I throw my Q? Do I not throw my Q? How do I know what to do? Now, I've actually experimented a lot with doing so many different things. Do I just Q the back three? Do I Q these? Do I not Q at all? What do I do? Well, Echo is very much 
think of Echo in the early laning phase as a very reactive champion. If if this champion that you're versing starts spamming the wave, maybe they start queuing the wave, auto attacking, auto attacking, auto attacking, then yeah, you can probably get away with just queuing all the creeps. But if this guy's just going to last hit and try and keep the wave in the middle, I'm completely fine with that. So I'm just going to take a chill pill, play very re very reactive, and take the game, or especially levels 1 and 2, quite slow. And a huge mistake I see Echo players, and myself I did for a long time on Echo and entered quite a bit, was I played way too fast with Echo levels 1 and 2. The, the days are way gone where you can just queue through the minion wave level 1 because what actually happens if you do that, the wave is going to be stuck in this really awkward position where they're going to hit level 2, you're going to be level 2, the wave is going to be here and you're not going to be able to actually trade aggressively on them because they're so close to the tower and you're just going to get yourself in a really sticky position. So what I actually tend to do is I like to do this. Just I'm just auto-attacking. If he auto-attacks, I like to really focus on my CSing and only use Q to last hit and ideally, if you can actually use Q to last hit and actually Q this person at the same time, throw a Q like, like, like that direction, then that would be ideal. You basically just want to minimize level 1 and 2. So keeping it in this nice little pocket, even over here is quite nice. But you, very, you don't really want it over in this position at all. And again, this first VOD is just first Casio. I am going to go over a VOD versus a Zed, a melee matchup, to see how it actually differs. So if that's what you're interested in seeing, those sorts of matchups, then skip to that specific matchup. But I thought this was a really good game to show the fundamentals of Echo. Like that. You see what I did there? I last hit with a Q. I threw it um, through to hit the Casio as well. So it's a nice little way to get a bit of chunk off, um, thin the wave a, li a little bit so they don't build a wave into you. Just keep it in a nice little position here. So again, you really want to maximize the amount of CS um, that you can get because this is going to help you um, get a really nice early base off for your 750 gold. Um, and you, and again, if you're very, very... And the other reason, guys, we're staying nice and healthy level 1, level 2 is by the time you hit level 3 and, le level, three, sorry, and level 4, that's when you're going to be quite strong because you're going to have 2 points in your Q. Um, is that's when you can actually start to take more aggressive trades. You can start to play for the wave, and by then you're going to have around 700 to 750 gold. Then you can start to heavy trade, push out the wave, and look for a reset. We'll get to that in a second, but that's why I'm trying to stay as healthy as I can level 1 and level 2. You know, if this guy just disrespects me and plays really, you know, you know, really poorly, yes, I can trade quite aggressively level 2, but again, if this Cassier or the person plays quite... Re plays quite respectfully, they hit their skill shots, they, they utilize their range advantage, then there's really not too much you can do level 2. Because even if I, you know, I jump onto Cassio, Cassio can just cue me on the back end here and just chase me down with ease, and I don't really want that. Now, notice how the wave's actually turning into a really good um, position right now. It's turning, in, it's becoming um, really favorable for me. And I'm just farm farming quite safely. All's good in the early game. And whenever I get an early game like this, I'm really, really happy. Something that you'll see me do soon that I don't do well, don't do very well these levels 1 to 2, is think of E, and, and E, it, your E is actually a very interesting ability. Yes, it's simple in the sense that it's just like a dash into a, you know, you can just dash onto the enemy. But something that I, I really urge you guys to experiment with is use your E to both dodge abilities and close the gap. Don't just view it in the sense of, I'm just going to use my E randomly. Try and time your E to dodge their ability and simul simultaneously go for the trade. And I'll try and show that within this VOD as well. I'll point it out when I do it. So I'm just trying to thin the wave. I get hit by way too many Qs in the early game here, which is, you know, not optimal. But again, the, the beauty of thinking about the early game as a mini game is you can always optimize it. There's always constantly better ways to take, um, to optimize the way you play this mini game. And look at this. Now when I hit level 3, I take 2 points Q because the reason I take 2 points Q, guys, is because it allows you to get such a better trade-off at level 3 and actually landing your W is super unreliable in the early game and the shield's not big enough to really matter that much. So I, I really recommend actually going 2 points Q. That's just my personal preference here. When she walks up like this, I go for a nice aggressive E trade, EQ trade, auto attack, proc the, proc the electrocute. And now I'm starting to pump up the the intensity of the lane, because again, I'm, I'm getting closer towards my 750 gold, um, and I want to start utilizing my corrupting pots, because again, I went t I go corrupting pot with time warp tonic, I don't want, I don't want to just be letting this guy get a completely free lane, um, you know, when, 
when I base for 750 gold. I want to punish this Casio and start to heavy trade when I'm getting closer to my mini game completion. Now, so I want to talk a little bit about this, this combo as well. And this is a combo that you guys will either have to practice in your normal games or practice tool before you jump into ranked. Notice how I don't I don't E then Q. I, I do like an EQ simultaneously. Look, you, you, you Q during the E. Like, look at this. EQ. So the, the Q actually is in in transit while you're eing so it's a really really efficient way to actually land your queue you don't want to be um throwing uh eing and then once once you land and connect then queue because then it's really unreliable and it's really slow and sloppy generally this is a much better way to actually get the queue to go both land both ways actually so it's a nice little combo that you guys will have to practice within your within your own games and now look at this Notice how, and you'll do, I'll really recommend you guys doing this versus any mage matchup. Look at this. Now I start to, I'm pumping the, I'm pumping up the, the pace of the landing phase now. Knowing I've still got a, a, a lot of corrupting pods. Cassio's going to go oom. I'm going to be looking to reset at 750 gold soon anyway. And now I'm actually forcing, able to force out her, her flash. Because she had no mana, she couldn't trade back. Now I'm actually just start, starting to push out. Knowing if I can get this wave... I'm going to get, uh, have enough gold to base my Dark Seal and my Dorans. Now, I want to go back, and this is, this is actually something that is replicable every single game, guys. So, you may ask, you may say something like this, like, Curtis, isn't this just a really bad trade? Yes, I could have dodged my Qs better. But the theory still stands here, guys, where I'm taking really aggressive trades, knowing that I have plenty of Corrupting Pots. She doesn't have Ignite. I have Ignite. She can't teleport back to the lane. And even if she does, it doesn't really matter. I still have the Combat Spell Advantage. Um, and I know that I'm going to be healthy enough to shove this out, knowing that she's going to be Oom. And this heavy trading is all going to suit me so well, because I'm just looking to base. And Echo, in around level 3, level 4, is when you can start to take really beautiful trades. I start to use my dematerializers on the caster creeps. Now, um, another tip here, guys. Once you hit level 4, and even if this guy stays and he's the same HP on me as me, what I would still do is I would still throw down my W and say he wants to contest me. I'll throw down my W. This is actually going to force them back a little bit. Then I'm going to throw my Q through the minion wave. And maybe I might have to throw one or two Qs to finish it off. And then again, I'll know what, I would have enough base. And around around it will be the exact same time every single game, 3 minutes 30, this wave. Um, you'll have enough gold to to stay, to go for your um, your perfect base. So I get this one, dematerialize, um, Graves ends up coming from the back end here. I'm able to just kind of walk it out, but then Graves ends up flashing, so I end up trading flashes. I ignite this Graves so Ivan can just finish him off here, and then he ends up dying. It doesn't really change my lane too much, but again, you know, I still completed my mini game. Now look at this, guys. This is, ex and this is, I love this so much. This actually gets me so hyped. Now look at this. The, the mage that you've done this strategy to, they're going to be either Oom, they're going to be low HP, and they're going to be struggling now to deal with the wave that you just pushed in. Even if he freezes, it does not matter, guys. And I'll tell you, I'll show you why in a second. So this Cassio is like, all right, well, you, you're basing, I can just farm all this CS. Look what's going to happen in a second. I come back with my Dorans and my Dark Seal, ideally a pink ward as well, if you can. But, you know, depending on how well you see us in the early game. I come back... And because I get to lane so fast with my E and I just come back here, even if it's frozen, then how is Cassio going to get a good reset for herself? She has to make a choice. Do I shove out and or do I stay in lane with no mana, no resources versus a full HP, full resources, Dark Seal, Doran's Echo? Or do I continue the freeze and then I'm just stuck, I'm just stuck in lane? So what's what I'm, and he can just unbreak it whenever I, what, I can just unbreak it whenever I want. So I come back and now I have so many options here, guys. And this is where Echo Mastery comes into play. And this is where things like side lane awareness, jungle tracking, etc., etc., all come into play. And I want to talk about the options I have here. When you come back into lane, you see something like this. I know that this guy is Oom. I know he wants to base, and I know he wants to shove this wave out so I don't freeze myself. So I I know a few things. Either the jungler is going to come here and help unbreak the freeze, or um you know, in which I can hold the wave here, call my jungler. We we win the two v two every single time because I have the item advantage, or maybe I I push it out myself and just continually keep this Cassio in lane, and or maybe I. Um, or maybe I have one side warded and I know this is an isolated 1v1 and then I can actually start to look for solo kills knowing this guy doesn't have flash and again, he has no real way to actually contest me. Or again, uh, or, you know, the main, the main thing that you'll see most Echo players do is that they'll just play for push, 
I keep this guy in lane or force him to take a really bad base, miss a bunch of CS, and just push and move, rotate, rotate, get vision control, look to dive sides, etc. And you'll see in a second, I have so many options. Now, let's see what I actually decide to do this game. And look, notice how bad this feels for this Casio. I've got such a strong early base. She really wants to. She really wants to base. Their jungler can't contest me anyway because with this build path as well, um, you, you're going to be so annoying for junglers to to want to attack as well because Echo is so hard to gank, and especially when I've got Vision on one side, I can just lean. I should get my pink my pink ward on one side in a second, and I'm basically going to be unkillable by the time I hit level six. And now I'm making this 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 Cassio's life a living hell. She wants to base for her tier. She wants to refresh her resources. She can't do anything. And you'll find this you'll find this exact same thing happening in all of your games. Or again, or they'll just base and they'll miss a bunch of CS. You can either, you know, push and reset again for a, for a whatever you want, or you can get a free roam off. You get a free roam off, or you can get deep wards. There's so many things you can do with your tempo. So now in between the waves here, I pushed her in. And now my my basic objective is just I want to keep this Cassio isolated in the lane. So again, she can't base. I'm gonna have pressure for a ridiculous amount of time. Like, look at this. I see her base, I'm like, alright, you want a base? I'm just going to continue to push, 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 rather than freeze. If I froze before, you know, that could have been another viable strategy, but I like to play the pressure game in solo queue, and I'm in this really favorable position. And yes, I can't really punish her because she's under tower, but look at this, now I'm exerting a ridiculous amount of pressure on the map. And this is the beauty of Echo, it doesn't matter what, if you get counterpicked, it doesn't matter what matchup, you can... As long once you get to understand the way the matchups work in, in little fine micro details, you will get better and better and better at playing that pre that pre first base mini game. Okay, guys. Now, actually, before we go on, I want to talk about this the second mini game. After first base, once you've got your Dorans and your Dark Seal, your next mini game is to get to level seven. You want to get to level seven, and then you want to get to a le uh, was it 1050 gold for your um, your revolver. Now, why is this? Again, reiterating one more time. Once you get level 7, you, uh, sorry, it's 50, not 10, um, your revolver, you're going to come back, and you that's when your Q actually starts one-hitting the back line, and you'll see it in, in this specific VOD. So I'm sticking around, I'm exerting pressure on the map, just hovering out of vision like this, trying to scare the enemy bot lane, and if a fight breaks out, I'm going to be there. This means in some games you're going to be able to get, get dragons, you're going to be able to go kill sides, you're going to be able to do a lot of these things. One thing to note, guys, it is quite hard to dive sides pre-6. Once you're 6, though, then you become a diving machine. That is something to think about here. But I have to remember the trade-off. If you're playing Echo and you are in this position, if I do go for a side lane play, I have to remember that is going to give the enemy mid laner an opportunity to reset. So in this game, I actually wasn't... I wanted to keep this Casio down, like keep my foot under him, make sure he can't get out and get away from me. I want to keep him in laning phase, make sure this Casio feels extreme pain for having to base. So I'm just constantly pushing her in and just, you know, keeping her stuck in this really awkward laning phase for her. And then again, constantly roaming, constantly leaning. And again, this is helping me complete my second mini game. Because once I get to my second mini game, finish my second mini game, then the game is completely in my control. I get infinite priority. I can minimize any single matchup. I can play super aggressive. The, the world's my oyster, essentially. So again, I'm constantly coming back mid. I'm not willing to commit to the side lane roams just yet. Because I wasn't willing to let this Casio get away from my, get get a free base just quite yet. So I'm, you notice how I'm just constantly resetting. And now because we have pressure here, I believe we actually could have done Dragon, but I, I think here I, I decided to get a nice little tempo reset because my bot lane, my AD carry just um, either reset or died. And now I've got I've actually got two whole resets on top of this Cassiopeia, another tempo base on this guy. And now you'll see as I come back to laning phase, guys, my Q, look at this. Bang, and actually one shot to the back, the caster creeps. And this is why I love taking Demon Tyrealizer. This is why I love this specific strategy. It feels so nice. And now I've identified my bot lane as winning, so I'm, and my top lane, actually. I think this was a pretty, uh, not a not too much of a harder game. Now, because of all the river control and all the pushing and moving, it makes the game so hard for the enemy jungler. They don't know what I'm doing. They don't know if I'm pushing and roaming. They don't know if I'm diving sides. They don't know if I'm just sitting here. And now the jungler feels the need. Oh my god, I have to help my side lanes. I have to stop the, the dives, etc, etc. And now the beauty of Echo is that these type of river skirmish picks you can make. Again, I get my nice little classic EQ combo. Ignite, auto attack, dead. 
And again, it could be the exact same for this Cassio. If, if Cassio walks through, I'm going to do the exact same thing. And this is the beauty of Echo, why he's so good in solo queue. You don't have to view him in, in, in the sense of just like roaming. I have so many options. I can play for aggressive trades mid, tr trades mid and win mid trades. I can play for tempo like I've done here and just push and move and hover and dive sides. Or I can literally just sit here and pick them in rotation. There's so many options. And, and, and now the game is just in... You notice how I'm dictating the pace of the game. Not this Cassiopeia. I'm dictating the pace of the game. And now um, I want to keep a little... I want to make sure I'm clearing this wave and not freezing it because my Ivan's actually starting the dragon. That's why I don't actually just freeze it there. And again, that was if I my jungle was in the ready for a gank or something like that, we could actually have just set up a gank, but that was my option. And notice how I'm just playing for the wave right now. I could also be playing for aggressive trades on this Cassio, but I actually decide not to do that. Um, and I decide to push and exert pressure on the map. So again, I want to reiterate this very much in, while I have this um, specific example. I could have easily looked for an EQ trade onto this guy. And what I was waiting for is actually Casio to Q here. I actually E passed it and then look for an EQ trade. If the mid laner you're versing is actually quite good, they will tether your E range. And that is actually kind of how you counter Echo. But if they do that, it's fine. You're respecting me that much. I'm just going to queue the wave. And then this is why the dematerializers come into play because it helps you just get so much, like clear the wave so much faster. And then you can just play for push and move. And again, this is where in your games, when you're looking in your own reviews, when you play Echo, you can review every single wave and be like, you know what? Should I have done this? Was I just pushing because I was autopilot and thought that this was the right play, or was I pushing? Or was I pushing because I thought it was genuinely the right play because I could have dove sides, we could have got objectives, I could have got D vision. There's all these things I could have got a reset. Was I pushing because that was the play? And you can always weigh it up and think about what was the trade off here. If I took an aggressive trade here, maybe that would allow us to dive mid soon or whatever it was. There's always a trade off and always a cost as long as you're aware of that, guys, and as long as you're thinking of that. Um, that's the most important thing. But the most important thing is actually understanding that you have all these options in the first place. Don't just tunnel yourself into one play style. And people always just view Echo as this assassin that has to go for solo kills. That's just not the case. So now I see top. It was taking really good trades. So I actually decided to look for a top dive. Vlad was actually forced to go for an all-in here because I was coming anyway. And then Lucian ends up just killing him anyway. So it would have been a nice, pretty easy dive for me regardless. Um, but one thing, again, I'm going to reiterate one more time, is that you really want to be minimizing the amount of roams you go for when you don't have ultimate. You want to make sure you're roaming when you have ultimate. Because dives are actually very hard without it. So now I'll come back. Now, this is actually another thing here, guys. When you're, when you're just in the laning phase, any portion of the laning phase, and you want to contest the wave, just use your W very, like, in the middle, kind of... If the, if the minions were all kind of... Imagine if all the minions were just like this, normal. These are the three melees, three melees. Use it like here in the middle over the melees. And then it, this, what it's actually going to do is going to force this person to walk back a bit. It's going to allow you to reposition. Then you can either choose to use Qs through, through them, through the minions onto the enemy or just straight through for priority. It really depends what you want. But again, using your W like this is a really great way to... Um, either create the opportunity opportunity to trade aggressively or just force them off and get a little bit of priority. So um, again, I really want to try and keep this Casio down. And now notice here actually, notice how I'm actually, I'm, I'm changed up my play style a little bit. Look at that. So this wave, I actually noticed that my Ivan was in the jungle and he wasn't really looking to, to do anything and my, bot, my top laner actually reset. So compare this to other ways where I was just spam pushing. Look at this. I actually don't, I actually don't queue the wave. And what I'm actually looking to do right now, I'm actually looking to um, look to EQ this guy. So I'm waiting for him to get into my threat range. So look at, no, notice how I'm starting to walk up quite aggressively, waiting for Casio to queue so I can queue over it onto this, onto this Casio. And, um, and another quick tip here, guys, you can time it with this, this minion here. So whenever the enemy go, and I'll show this in the next VOD I actually go through, I go over, because this guy, this Cassio was actually quite decent, so I wasn't able to get many opportunities, and this was a game where I actually played for push and move quite often, but the next the next VOD's going to be quite different. But looking at this, if this Cassio um, was going to be looking to E this, or maybe Q this, this minion here, that would be a really good opportunity for me to then, um, then the gaps can be closed, and I can look for that EQ trade. 
but he ends up landing the keeps landing cues on me really well, which gets the MS, which means I can't really um, punish, unfortunately. So this Castillo played quite well, and I kind of played quite poorly in in, in the terms of actually um, dodging those cues out. So a bit unfortunate, but it is what it is. But now, anyway, I'm working towards my proto belt. Once I get my proto belt again, I'm going to be getting insane priority because of that wave clear. And this is another little tip here, guys. Notice how I put my pink. Um, in the uh, dot brush there, and then I just lean here in between waves. There's no point sitting in the middle of the wave ever. You don't want to be sitting in vision in mid lane, giving away your position for free. You want to be sitting in the side, and then look what happens here. Cassio is actually forced to ward like that. Or And then sometimes what you can you can do, you can actually ward here, and again, sit in this dot brush over here, and then if, if Cassio tries to follow, you can um, W this little, this little corridor and actually get a nice trade there. But here, I'm, I actually force out the ward from Cassio, which is nice. And notice I'm trying to look for an E trade onto this Cassio, but she's respecting. Now, this is actually quite high level. You can't really tell from this VOD, but I'm, I'm constantly tethering this way. I'm trying to get this guy to close the gap. I'm waiting for these minions to get low, but she's actually respecting quite well. So I'm not, not able to look for that E. And I'm, I'm trying to get it. She puts the, I bait out, I get, uh, get out the miasma, but I'm really not able to land it, those E's on her, unfortunately. So, um, you know... Again, this sort of gameplay, it will be a lot easier for you guys in lower elo. You know, this is like a high diamond game or like a master tier or whatever it is. So, um, you know, the mid laners are a lot better at tethering, but, you know, the point still stands. So now, again, I actually... An Echo is a champion that thrives in these chaotic skirmishes. Cassio does not, and a lot of these mid-majors, don't want these chaotic skirmishes. When I see this happen, even when I know the scuttle is actually... The enemy's taking the enemy scuttle... I know that I have so much mobility, I have so much burst, I have my ultimate, I have everything. These are the sorts of fights I want. These are these chaotic skirmishes that I want. Now, notice something here, guys. You always want to put your W where you think they're going to walk. You don't put it there. You don't put it anywhere where they are. You want to put it where you, where you think they're going to walk. And again, pretty self-explanatory in this example because they want to get back to the tower. So I just kind of put it here and make sure I'm hugging the wall because that's where they're, they're looking to go. Time my E like that beautifully again, and we're able to get a nice little double kill there. Now, Cassio ends up trying to follow. Now, this is so good for me. This is exactly what I want, and unfortunately, I was trying to actually, I was actually trying to time my E so I could go to here, and then that would flick me over the other side, but unfortunately, the Masma was too fat, too thick, thick boy, and then I um, wasn't able to get that, that E off, but then, so I just changed my target onto this Graze. We end up forcing out the Cassio, end up killing this Graves as well. And he blows flash. So this is the, exactly the skirmish that you want. And you may ask yourself before, you know, but you knew this was warded. Why don't you just go back mid? But again, they're too overextended. They've used all their abilities. And even if I can, you know, force flashes or create chaos in the game, once I've gotten to this point in the game, I'm super, super stoked. All right, guys? And these are the sorts of skirmishes that... You want, you want to be looking to play around with and test your limits because this is the difference between a lot of Echo players is actually the quality of your skirmishing here. And again, if I was a better Echo player, I would have been able to time my E perfectly. E over this, I, if you, I think you probably can. I'm pretty sure the E range is actually bigger than than this anyway. But, um, you know, there's so many ways to, to maximize your, your skirmishing. Now, something else to think about, and that will come with time, guys, is actually being very aware of your shadow. I don't know what these people call it, shadow, whatever. If Cassio was walking this way onto this onto this Draven, then you know I could potentially be looking to use my R, even if I hadn't finished this guy, to self peel, knowing that I'm going to get the AOE damage from my R, and then um, you know if Cassio was here or whatever, and turn back onto this Cassio. Something and why Echo has a, such a high skill cap, even though he's a very simple champion, is because his skirmishing has so much. There's so much. There's, there's so many, so much room for, uh, for improvement micro-wise. Timing your ultimate really, really well. Um, being really aware of your shadow location or clone location, whatever. The positioning of your W itself within skirmishes. The timing, uh, the timing of your EQ combo. Weaving in auto attacks. Dodging abilities with your E. There's all these little micro things that will come into play when playing Echo. But the important thing is, is to actually spend the time to review your skirmishing. So there I actually thought he was going to cue me into the wall and potentially kill me or something. So I end up using my R preemptively there. So anyway, we get that. I get my proto belt. Beautiful. I'm in a really, really nice spot here. I come back to mid lane. So ideally, I want my bot lane, my, my bot lane to actually break the tower so I can begin to um, get into the side lane. That's, that's what I really, really want. 
So here I actually kind of get caught off guard by this Cassio. I end up using my W way too late. Um, but it is what it is. Anyway, fast forwarding this a little bit here. Another 2v2 skirmish breaks out, which I know is very favorable for Echo. So I'm trying to, I was actually trying to dodge out the Echo, um, the Cassio ultimate, but she didn't use it. But she blew flash. Um, anyway, is what it is. Fast forwarding a little bit. Pretty self-explanatory here, guys. At this point of the game, I've got my protobout. I'm just playing for push and move, collapsing on the enemy jungle, making sure they don't contest any of my vision. This is my river. When you're ahead on Echo, you want to make, make sure that you're controlling the rivers. And here, Namians are just hovering this Cassio, so I can't really dive. I was actually going to be looking for a dive here, but the, the Nami ultimate come through, so I couldn't really do that. So at this point in the game... Generally, you have a few options again. You want to be pushing and moving, leaning to your side. So, actually, the biggest thing I recommend at this point in the game, if you're ahead on Echo, is actually start to push and lean to your bot side so they can break this bot tower. I'm just drawing on the minimap here, guys. And the reason that's actually really big is once your bot lane is able to break that tower, then they're able to go mid. And then what is the huge strength of Echo, guys? Is that Echo thrives in the side lane. Better than most, actually, most mid champions in the game. So if you're able to get to the point of the game where your mid lane goes, your AD carry support go mid, and you go into the side lane when you're ahead, it should be you've basically sealed the deal for a victory. And I'll kind of show you as we get into mid game um, how you actually play that out. But that's my mindset right now: is push and move. You'll see me in a second. I start hovering towards my bot side like this to relieve a bit of pressure from my bot lane. But unfortunately, my jungler just ints a little bit here. But um, the premise still stands. Um, again, I'm trying to constantly shove this guy, and notice how I'm using my W quite aggressively here. And the reason I'm doing this is because I really want to, um, I really want to force this Cassio out. I think, well, I think, I think I go for a kill here in a second. So I go for this nice little trade. Ah, oh, here we go. So yeah, I go for this nice little trade here. Cassio plays too aggressive, so I'm like, you know what? If you want to, if if you're not going to let me play for the wave, then I'm just going to play for you instead. She gets into my E range. And another little tip, guys. Once you get your Proto Belt, the reason Proto Belt is so nice on Echo as well is because it actually helps you close the gap with your E. Now, notice before, biggest problem, one of the biggest problems um, that was preventing me from taking those really nice EQ trades was, you know, the enemy could just tether me. But now, once you got your Proto Belt, you can actually E into Proto, which is going to close the gap, which is going to allow you to get that EQ combo off which is, you know, exactly what you want to be looking to do. Now, notice how much ground I can actually cover now. I don't actually do it then specifically, but the premise still stands. Proto really helps you close that gap. Now, Cassio tries to take that kill. I, and notice this. This is a nice little trick here. Notice how I time my Q when he Qs. Look at this. Bang. He Qs, then I Q, and I just finish him off like that. And that's, again, one of those little skirmishing things that you can improve on in yourself is making sure you're utilizing your, your E, um really really efficiently you're just not using it for the sake of using it you want to try and time it to dodge abilities as well because dashes are quite uh, quite um valuable within league of legends anyway fast forwarding a little bit i'm working towards my lich bane and finishing my boots first and a, a question i get actually quite often is when do you sell your dorans and dark seal if i if i'm not really urgent for a specific power spike i really like to hold on i would i want to use my pink ward first come back then get my sheen um and if i'm not i, I really try and hold off and selling my dorans until it actually buys me lich bane i don't like selling dorans just for a blasting wand or an ether wisp but if 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 it ha helps me actually complete the lich bane then yes i would sell it but in that, but you know, so there is going to be a point in the game where you're going to have a lot of gold and you're actually not going to be able to, because you're just going to have Sheen, you're just going to be sitting on Sheen and you're not going to be able to getting, uh, finishing off your Lich Bane. It might feel a little bit awkward. You'll be sitting on like, you know, a thousand and something gold. It, it is what it is. It's a bit awkward, but I just really don't like selling Dorans early. It's just a waste. It's a big waste. Again, that's just my personal preference. Now, I'm really trying to get to the point in the game where my, like, I'm hoping to slowly um, allow my bot lane to break this tower, but it's taking a lot longer than expected. But again, then I'm like, you know what, because I can't do that, so I start taking, oh, that's where I do the proto trade. Look at this, guys. I do the E proto. E proto Q, bang, auto attack. Get the nice little, nice little trade off, but now I'm still hovering, which is quite annoying, which is preventing me from actually um, getting priority on this guy. It is what it is. As we fast forward, let's fast forward a little bit to the mid game because you guys kind of understand the premise at this point in the game. Oh yeah, now they break bot town. Now I'm going into the side lane. 
Now, I actually type in chat here. I remember I was typing in chat. I said, let me make Casio go top. And an, a nice little tip for you guys is actually communicate with your team. Telling, tell the team, I want to make the enemy mid laner match me in the side lane or someone match me in the side lane. If you don't communicate this and your team just groups and tries to force and you don't communicate with pings or by typing, then the enemy mid laner is going to get away with not having to match you in the side. So I want to force this Cassio in the side so then I can just push and move and create a man advantage fight or drag people to or drag people to the side lane because I'm just going to straight up kill someone in the side lane. So I want to create a man advantage both of those ways by either dragging them to me or again pushing and moving and leaving Cassio in the side lane. And the great thing about Echo and why he's so good at the side lane is, is because he's so slippery. No jungle wants to touch him. Like, let's just leave this Echo. Let, let him do what he wants. And now this is where it feels great. Cassio's catching waves at tier 2. I'm going to be, you know, um, pushing my way through the jungle here, looking to threaten dives, clearing vision whenever I can. I end up seeing a pink ward there. Um, we end up breaking mid tower off of it, off my lean. I think they were going to get it anyway, but the premise still stands. You want to be leaning to generate threat, create that man advantage. Um, and this is basically what you want to be doing, rinse and repeat. And here I actually get caught a little bit. I, I was trying to quickly sneak this uh, pink orb, but Nami ends up bubbling me. End up don't seeing it, um, but I end up getting out here, escaping, go back to the side lane. A fight kind of breaks out. That's really what you don't want to be letting happen. And again, I contribute that to, to this. If I get chunked or have to reset or do anything like this, now this is the opportunity for the enemy mid laner to start a fight because I know I'm not going to be I'm not able to pressure the side lane. I am not able to push out the, the the wave for a while. I might have to either reset, get another item, refresh my resources, whatever. This is the opportunity where the enemy mid laner can go for a fight. So try and communicate with pings in these moments or type or whatever you need to do to prevent the enemy mid laner from looking for a fight in this specific moment. I didn't do that at all. My teammates um, continue to push even though I was chunked out, which this is all, this is all on, on me anyway for getting caught like that. So um, they end up having to um, end up dying to I think one of them dies but you know it is what it is so I'm starting to continue to push out the side lane the deeper you can push out the more towers you can get which means basically the more priority the more room you're gonna get to um, make plays as the as the game goes on so I'm able to push and able to break that tier 2 as well reset working towards my Lich Bane now again, you want to be getting to objectives early as Echo. And the reason you want to be getting now, because I know that this Mountain Dragon is actually our next dragon here. Now, a, a nice little tip here, guys. If you know that the enemy is going to be looking to contest this dragon, and the reason I say get to the fight early is because you want to put yourself in a nice little position to set yourself up for a flank. Now, let's just say hypothetically we we, we had a, you know, a deep vision here, or maybe we saw this Trisana start, or the team start to walk down this way. Now, I would either position here or here, with my team, you know, starting the dragon or whatever they're doing. And when they start to walk through this corridor, I will start to use my W. And or there's two there's two ways you can actually approach it. You can use your W as like a zoning tool and actually threaten them so they don't really want to walk through this choke point to, to create enough time, buy your team enough time to finish the dragon. Or what you can actually do is you'll notice how the front line will always go through first, and then the back line are the stragglers. They're the one, you know, the they don't want to face check, they want it to be behind their front line. So what you do, you play patient, you wait for the front line to start to walk through, then you come out, then use your W a little bit later, and then you can get straight access onto the back line through here. Now, but if I were to just play the, the fight front to back, I can still do that and still just, you know, just E proto onto the back line. But if you're versing a lot of champions with a lot of uh, self peer, a lot of lockdown, it's going to be quite hard to get onto the back line. This is why you need to get to objectives first. Put yourself in these nice little positions where you can get, um, get, and uh, get onto the back line by controlling these choke points or looking for, for picks in any creative way. Now, again, there's no one formula. It's all about understanding this concept so then, you know, you can start to think, oh, okay, given they're coming to this Baron or they're coming to this specific objective, how do I position my character in a way, knowing the path they're going to go through, where I can actually get onto the back line? Because ideally, Echo's not the best front-to-back champion. There's better champs out there. You know, for example, if I were to play this fight front-to-back and they were to come through here, Cassia would just miasma here or whatever she does, and I'm not going to be able to E through then I'm just going to be completely screwed. I'm going to get mowed in the front to back. So that's a nice little tip there. It's something for you guys to experiment with within your own games. Um, it's something that I've found to be quite helpful for me anyway. Um, 
And the same goes for this choke point over here. If they're looking to go through here, then maybe I'll sit here or that. I'll join the minimap, that little bush down on the in the river. And then again, waiting for them to come in a little bit, which is again, I'm just going to be creating that, that back line, that back line thread essentially. So we end up, they don't end up not contesting at all. And then we end up just grouping here. Now something, and you'll notice what I do in a second. I don't want this fight to happen. And you'll notice in a second, and the, you may ask like, Curtis, why don't you want this fight to happen? Well, how is this playing to, to Echo's strengths? Echo wants to create a man advantage in the side. Why would I give the enemy a straight 5v5 front to back under tower when I can just be getting side, I can push the side lane out all the way deep to tier three. I can look for flanks. I can do all, we can play around objectives. There's so many things we can do. Why would I give Cassio the fight here, guys? So what I actually do, I realize, well, what am I doing? So I was autopiloting a little bit here, just following a call blindly. I'm like, no. Isn't, and look at this. My, my, I can't do anything. So I actually I start pinging back, and I ping on my way mid, because uh, so I don't want this fight to happen. They continue to go, unfortunately, um, and the fight kind of gets disengaged, but um, we end up getting out. So I could have prevented that whole thing from happening, all the way back here. I should have realized, dude, this is a bad fight for me. I want to be in the side lane. I want to be dragging Cassio or someone away from the team, creating a man advantage, playing around terrain where I can actually get a flank off or some sort of side lane, th side come threat from the side. I can't do it from here. So again, my team get punished for this and it is what it is. And this is, again, something that uh, one of those, all these little details, guys, that can make your lives a lot easier when playing Echo. And they're all the little details that can really help you with... Um, carrying basically as echo and translating your lead you know from early to mid game to late game now one thing here guys that i actually disagree with that i do and i want you guys to learn from my mistake here notice how that bot fight end up happening so everyone's resetting so my, you can see on the mini map here these guys are resetting my draven's coming back on the map my ivan just resets coming back on the map what should i be doing i should be resetting as well and i agreed right here for my Lich Bane, instead of looking to sell my Dorans, which I should have just... This is a perfect example where you should sell Dorans to reset at the same time. I should have reset after this wave here. If I got this wave, instantly back up, start recalling. I would be recalling it basically the same time as my Pantheon and my Lucian right here. I'd be coming on the map at the same time, looking to pressure at the same time. Now, why is this so bad? Yes, it's bad for tempo, but what is that tempo, that lack of tempo and the lack of synergized base? What does it actually mean for the game? Now, what happens when I do this, now notice how the team is all on the map, ready to pressure, they push out the waves, they're ready to fight. Now also, Cassio is able to catch the side lane wave, and now group, before I've even got to the side lane. This is giving the enemy an opportunity to take a fight, because um, pushed the, the enemy is able to push out the side waves, they're able to, my team's looking to do stuff, but I'm still, like, I'm like, wait guys, wait, I need to push out the side, I want to create a man advantage. This is creating it's basically creating the conditions um of fights that are not going to be favorable for your champion which is very important to understand and you know i don't get too punished too hard here but again cassio could just be looking to fight and there's nothing i can do about it because they don't need to react they're already pushing tier two when i'm still catching waves deep deep in top lane so this is very very bad learn from my mistakes here guys and you'll notice in a second, I continue to push, push, push. And what this actually does, guys, this actually creates a condition. It allows you to create the conditions for Baron. Because now that I've got this tower, the minions are actually going to crash all the way up to tier 3. Which is going to give us, move our, be able to move our line of vision way deeper. And now look at all this space and all this room we have to actually start the Baron. Because they actually have to catch waves all the way up here. This is what pushing... All the way deep in the side lane actually does for Echo. And if a fight breaks out, notice how beautiful this is for Echo. I can come in from the side. There's all these beautiful choke points where I can put my W, get onto the back line. You're just creating the beautiful, perfect condition. It's like baking a cake, you know. Ticking all the boxes, following the recipe, doing the things step by step. We've pushed them all the way to tier 3. Now this is where we can start to rush our Baron. We get the Baron, we come back, we look for a nice, I look for a nice little pick onto this Tristana, I see her overextended, I do a nice little W deep in the lane, knowing that that's where she's going to run to, beautiful, boom, dead. So I think I've got the most out of this video, guys, we're going to go on to the next VOD, this next one, I'm going to go over just the early laning phase versus an, uh, uh, actually an Annie. Alright guys, this is one where I'm playing Echo versus Annie. 
I'm just going to go over the early landing phase here because I thought it was a really, really classic example of you know, a nice little landing phase versus quite an early aggressive champion because Annie obviously has insane range advantage over me. Not really too much I can do, so I need to respect early game, but the mini game still stands. I'm playing very, very defensively, looking to last hit with my Q, um, or if, if she Qs the minions, then I can actually auto-attack them. Look at this, Q, 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 beautiful, and I would actually get all three with my Q. And Annie's still, you know, just slowly pushing into me as well. Sometimes what I actually like to do, if I feel like I queue the minions too much, I actually walk up, take an auto attack from this Annie, which then my minions will begin to attack Annie, which is going to relieve, um, while these minions, are, the enemy minions are still going to attack these ones. So it's actually going to um, stop pushing into them. It's going to uh, increase the chances of, of Annie pushing into me. It's, that's quite an advanced little tip, but, you know, it's just a, I, I thought I'd just mention it anyway. Because notice how then my casters were actually hitting Annie instead of the enemy wave. So anyway, the premise still stands here. I'm just looking to minimize as much as I can. Try and stay as healthy as I can. Last hit with my Q. Make sure I'm not queuing too many minions. Um, but again, continue to play this first mini game. Get to 750 gold so I can get my Dark Seal and a Dawn's Ring. Now, this is another little tip here, guys. Again, if this person doesn't respect my E range and they're just going to look to take these trades, I'm happy to take level 2 trades as long as, again, um, if they're just st sitting in my E range, I'm happy to take it and they're not not—they're standing way too deep in the lane. Look, look how deep Annie was standing in the lane like that. That's like, like This is ridiculous because she's also going to take mi uh, minion, my minion aggro. So I, I'm happy to take that trade. But again, if Annie's all the way back here, I'm not going to be able to take that EQ trade because I'm also going to take that... um. The minion aggro. So I'm really, really grateful here because the minion's still actually pushing into me here. So I'm super stoked. But again, I don't want to play too fast level 1, level 2. Because remembering level 3, level 4, when I want to push out, um, when I want to push out, that's when I'm going to be... I want enough HP so I can actually do that. The reason I actually queue, I actually go for this EQ trade is because Annie just queued the minion under me. So I knew her Q was actually on cooldown. She's just queuing the minions under me. So I'm going to get those nice little trades. And just notice how I'm able to play a little bit more aggressively in this matchup as well because Annie can't really chase me down on the back end with trades like Cassio could. Cassio could just QEE me on the back end, but Annie can't really do that. So here, unfortunately, my jungle was actually invading. I have a nice little freeze, so I really didn't want to go to that fight. And I saw Akali actually moving as well. There really wasn't too much I could have done here. So unfortunately, I um, my jungle just dies. Maybe I could have saved him, but I thought he was just dead anyway. So it is what it is. So here, the beautiful thing is, the wave's in a really, really good spot. I'm getting very close to my 750 gold. You'll start to see me thin the wave out a little bit so it doesn't get too big. I'm starting to dematerialize some of the casters. I'm starting to hold it here a little bit because, again, I need to push out one one more wave, the next wave, to be able to afford my, um, my perfect base. So now you'll see in a second, I start to trade aggressively and start to push out, knowing I'm getting my level 4. I have my two points Q at the moment. Now I've got my W. And I can get my, 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 my nice little reset here to complete my first mini game. So now I'm just pushing, pushing, pushing. Push this next wave. Here I actually stay for one extra wave than I usually would. I think this was just because Annie gave me so much free room. Usually you wouldn't get this much free room and because you wouldn't be able to take those quality of trades as I did in the early game. That's just because Annie... Um, doesn't really have much counterplay level one, le like level two, level three. Um, it is what it is. So I'm able to get a nice little base here. So I get my Dorans. I'm able to get a pink ward as well. I come back, fast forwarding a little bit here. Um, and he does some TP play bot, whatever. But it comes back mid, and we're in the same little situation. Now I have a choice. Remembering guys, once you're at this position, you got both your your you've got your Dorans, you got your Dark. So we have a few differing options. Near knowing that I'm hitting level six soon. I can actually start to play for wave and start pushing and moving, getting a bit more control, playing for mid 2v2s, etc. Or I can actually leave the wave pushing into me, hold it on my side, actually start to walk past the mini wave and, and start to take aggressive 1v1 trades. This is just a differing style and, and this is the reason I wanted to use this VOD specifically and contrast it with the Casio one because in the Casio VOD, I was very much playing for push and move, whereas in this VOD, um, Annie you know, took the L in the early game in terms of the minions um, I'm trying to, th and, and now I'm just playing for, um, you know, these aggressive trades like this. Now, I want to break down this trade a little bit here. 
I know the way's pushing into me, but I don't want it to get so big that Annie actually crashes it. So I'm actually trying to thin it a little bit here. You'll see me thin it in a little bit. Now, I W, because again, I'm looking to take a trade. Even if it doesn't stun, I walk through it or E through it to get the shield, which helps me take a very favorable trade like this. So I'm thinning out the wave a little bit, and then I EQ, bang, auto attack, proc my electrocute, run out with the movement speed boost, bang. Beautiful. Now I'm just thinning a little bit because I don't really want it to crash under my tower. I think I Q it as well. Because it's getting too big. And now the reason I'm not going um, I'm not going for this Annie is because she's actually got a stun up. One thing I actually want to look for in this last trade. Okay, so I knew that she didn't have stun. That's also why I went for this trade. But um, after this, she she had her stun. She was just holding her stun. So I wasn't able to go for a trade here. Then as soon as she uses... Oh, she actually uses a Q on me. I end up getting chunked hardcore by this Kha'Zix. And you'll see in a second what I do. I'm trying to thin the wave out. That's why I W to give myself a little bit more durability. I'm trying to cue the wave a little bit more. Unfortunately, I think I missed the cannon here. Now, I'm about to hit 6, but I know Annie's also very close to 6. But I hit 6, then I just go in, bang, flash, and I just get the kill on the back end there. Use my ult to just be a little bit healthy, just in case Kha'Zix was there. But I didn't even see Kha'Zix was top, so I didn't even need to do that. Um, then it was a nice little solo kill there, guys. So again, then it's this rinse repeat after that. I come back, I get my revolver. Now I have insane wave clear. Then I start to pivot my strategy. I start to play, you know, W aggressively, look for aggressive trades. If they, if she tethers me or she respects me, I'll start to cue the wave. Um, or I'll take aggressive trades first, chunk her out, then start to play for push and move. And again, this just is a testament to how flexible... Echo is, and it's as long as you're understanding all the options that you have, and you're not just one-dimensionally focusing on solo kills, then um, you, it's going to increase your chances of being able to actually exert pressure around the map. So now look at this, I'm starting to push and move, my Q1 shots the back creeps, and now I start to lean onto bot side looking for a potential roam. So just breaking down this trades before we move on to the next VOD here, guys, again, pretty self-explanatory as I come back to lane here, I get the shield with the E, Annie actually respects, now she's holding stun. So I can't really go onto her. In a second, you'll see she actually uses her W, uses her stun. That means her cooldowns are down. So I can go for a nice little trade. Bang, walk out with the movement speed, rinse, repeat. And again, you'll see me in a second. I do the exact same thing. She actually uses her abilities on the way. She doesn't have her stun. Um, then she tethers my E quite well there. So I'm not able to land the E. But it's, you can just see it's just the same concepts. Playing around the enemy cooldowns, not just mindlessly eing forward, trying to time it with it when their, their abilities are down, their self peel is down, and then pivoting your strategy. Once you've got some good trades, use that to get a bit of control. Use that to start exerting pressure in the river. Don't just view the game as an isolated 1v1. So then what we're going to finish off this video with one last VOD, guys. This one's going to be Echo versus Zed. So with this last VOD, guys, uh, the reason I want to show this one is because it'd be good to kind of contrast it with a melee matchup. Now, melee matchups, there's no real formula. Again, the minigame still stands in the sense that you want to get to 750 gold for your Dark Seal and your Dorans. But the way you navigate it is very dependent on the matchup that you're versing. Now, if you're versing a champion like Kiana or Kassadin or a lot of melee champions, I actually tend to use my Q a lot more aggressively because I really want to ensure that I get level 2 first. In melee matchups, whoever gets level 2 first is really able to, to get some really favorable traits. You notice how I'm auto-attacking a lot more already than I have done in my previous two because I want to make sure I have the minion advantage. I want to make sure I'm not, I'm not pushing so fast that the wave's going to die straight away uh, um, and the next wave spawns here, then the wave's stuck here. I want to thin it I want to push it, I want to make sure, but I just want to make sure that I have the, uh, the, the level 2 advantage. I want to make sure I'm like one or two creeps ahead of this Zed. So, um, again, if you can do these sorts of trades, if you can queue them and the minions, that's ideally what you want to be doing. But again, there's no real formula. Basically trying to optimize the usage, usage of your queue, not push too fast. Now, notice here, because I've kept the wave in a really nice spot, I haven't hard pushed it. The next wave come um, has actually come, and it's actually crashed here, in the, basically in the middle of the, the wave, in the middle of the lane, sorry, which is really, really great for me. Now, I know you're going to get level 2 off the first um, minion of the second of the second wave, and I'm already, I'm already thinking about that. I already know as soon as this minion dies, I'm going to get level 2, so that I can look for an EQ trade, and you'll see me in a second. Um, this, this minion dies, and as soon as that minion dies, I level up E, go for a nice little EQ trade. It's exactly what you want to be doing in these melee matchups, basically. 
getting level two first, keeping in this nice little pocket. Then, once you've taken this trade, then you want to be looking to crash the wave because, again, you don't really want the wave sitting um, outside their tower, ideally, because then there's not enough room to, to all in them. Unfortunately, it takes me a while to push. So I'm just trying to break it. I'm trying to... Um, Trying to get this wave in, basically. I don't want to really want it in this position. And the reason I'm playing quite aggressively here without warding, guys, is because I'm versing a Zac jungle. I know his early ganks are quite weak, and especially given that I have a Jarvan, I know we're going to have quite a lot of river control in the early game, so I'm not too fast here. So I'm able to get this wave in, finally. And now I'm, you know, I'm like halfway, over halfway to my completing my mini game. Got a really nice, um, great trade. I've still got two corrupting pots. I'm in a nice little power, I'm in a power position here. And a nice little power position. So again, I'm just hovering just in case any skirmishes break out. Because again, Echo is really great. Those, those skirmishes, especially when you're level three. And now I've got my two points, my uh, two points, Q, um, dodging out uh, Zed's W Q combo. Um, and again, I'm just I'm happy to just constantly harass this guy. And I have a few options. I, I, want, I want to quickly talk about this. Once I get this wave in, if I was versing a, a much more aggressive early jungler, I would actually let this wave come all the way out. Because this is like because if you guys have watched my wave management video, um, you'll know as soon as the wave crashes like this, these minions attack these ones. I know it's going to start to slow build out to me. And if you know if I'm if I'm quite scared in the early game and I don't really feel like pressuring or I can't really pressure, I'll actually let that wave come out to me a little bit more. I actually won't touch this wave. Let Zed, you know, maybe kill two or three of these. Let it come out here a little bit. Maybe thin it a little bit. Keep it in here. Then level four start to all in the wave base around 750 gold and you know rinse repeat. So again, it just really depends on the amount of threat that is on you. Depends on the one v one matchup if you win it. Depends if you if you were able to get those nice little early trades off anyway it's again the as long as you understand the concepts of echo you can play around and understand it for yourself but that's the main reason i'm trying to do this the way i'm trying to do this video is talk about the fundamentals so you guys can play around with it and really start to experiment with your own in in, in the matchups yourself Again, I start to use my DMATs. You'll see me start to use DMATs here, trying to get this wave in. And uh, I believe I can actually get my, um, complete my first minigame off these. And I do so. So now I base. Same thing here, guys. Got my, my two items, my Dark Seal, my Dorans. Beautiful, completed my first minigame. You notice how last game I was able to get a, a pink ward as well. It just depends on how well you see us. Now, again, this guy... Um, because, and, and you'll notice something I, I want to talk about here. If you do this strategy properly, and again, this 3 minutes 30 this time, the next wave will actually be a cannon wave. Um, while you have enough, you'll have 750 gold, you'll be able to base on this wave as it's a cannon, which is basically every single time. Then now Zed has to deal with this cannon wave, which gives me plenty of time to look for a reset. He actually ends up spending the time pushing it out, which means I have insane tempo on this guy. I have so many options. I can freeze this here for a little bit if I can. I can actually... I could have actually walked out these minions here because they were attacking me and actually froze it, denied Zed a whole wave. Or I can actually push out like you see me do here to try and get a bit of deep vision, look for a roam, whatever, reset the wave. Um, there's so many things I can actually do here. So I end up pushing it out, getting a nice little deep ward for this Zac because I'm versing a Zac. I want to make sure I have Raptors. End up spotting um, using the Scry's Bloom as well, give a bit more information for my team. Now the second mini game now starts. Where I want to get to 1150 gold for uh, 1150 gold. So ten, sorry, 1050 gold for my um, proto belt, a revolver. Sorry. Um, but again, I'm starting to just push. I, I'm deciding to play this so far. Just playing it very much push, push, push. Um, and then again, that really depends on your feel of the game. Do you feel like the sides are very vulnerable? where you can actually, you know, impact the side lanes? Do you want to play it more aggressive 1v1? Keep the wave in the middle, play for aggressive trades. How do you want to play it is really up to you. So now at this point of the game, guys, uh, I'm nearing 6. I still have quite a bit of gold to get to my, my revolver. But now, um, when I choose to actually do these Ws in the lane, what this says to the enemy is like, he has to respect a little bit. If this guy doesn't respect and doesn't tether my E properly, then I can look to take these EQ trades knowing that I have the shield buff with the W. So that's something to play around with as well. Knowing that the, the bot lane's already dead, I'm not re and my top lane's actually reset, I'm actually not just playing for push anymore. I'm actually trying to keep the wave in the middle, potentially look for a nice little aggressive trade. Um, and again, this is where side lane awareness really comes into play. You don't want to just be mindlessly shoving waves. I dodge with my E. Now Zed knows my abilities are down. This is something you guys have to be very, very careful of. Echo, 
Echo actually has quite long cooldowns, and if you use your EQ on the wave and you don't actually respect the enemy, they can actually look to all in you like Zed does here. But I know that I'm actually hitting six um, soon as well. Zed doesn't respect that. I get my level six. I'm trying to tether his abilities here. I'm able to get my nice little R here, chase with my, my E flash, and I'm able to kill this uh, Zed on the back end. One thing I could have done better in this skirmish, and what I should have done, and something I recommend for you guys in your skirmishes, is actually use your W straight away. Don't hold on to it. Just, as soon as it's up in these skirmishes, just use it. Because again, I should have W'd on the shadow here, and when he popped back to it, I would have been able to get a nice little stun on it, on top of it as well. And I was able to um, just kill him quite easily here. And then it's just rinse, repeat as well. Get that solo kill, play for the wave, get my revolver, rinse, repeat. Now... I know there's a lot of information in this video. Um, if you have any questions about Echo, uh, just feel free to you know, hit me up in the comment section. Hit me up in Discord. I'm happy to answer every single one of your questions. I truly recommend that every mid laner should at least attempt picking up Echo. He's a very fun champion. Um, you can have a lot of fun playing him. And yeah, just let me know how it goes. Now, I'm really interested to see how it goes for you guys. Cheers. Thanks for watching.